Hello, everyone, and welcome to Diving Into the AAC Language Lab. I am Jane Odom, and I will be your cruise director today as we um, learn a little bit more about the Language Lab as well as have some fun. So we've got um, a really nice training plan for you. I'm Beth Waite Lefever. I'm the Training and Implementation Specialist with PRC, and I'll be moderating Jane's class today. So I'll be watching your questions in chat and helping her along the way when you, with your guys' comments and questions. So we want to go over a little bit of housekeeping first here. Technical difficulties are not the norm, but if you would have trouble hearing or connecting to this class, you want to check your volume, check your speaker source. You can log out of GoToTraining and log back in. You may have to just, you know, turn your computer all the way off, turn it back on. If that doesn't work, we would ask you to contact Log Me In. Okay, so this is the Go to Training window pane. So if you see the wider gray, light gray bar, then you're using the desktop version on your computer. If you have that darker, skinny gray bar, then you're using the web-based version or you're using an app on a tablet. Audio tab I mentioned, if you're having trouble with your sound, you can check the audio tab there and make sure that the right sound source is selected. This is a very interactive class. You guys know Jane, she's very engaging and she gives you lots of opportunities to interact. So there will be times where we ask you to chat out your thoughts and ideas. And that really does make the best class when we all learn from each other. So that's what you will do is you will type out your comments and questions and additions in that chat box. And then I will call those out for Jane. If you're a speech language pathologist and you pay for the ASHA CEU registry, so you pay to have ASHA track your CEUs, then we are offering CEUs for this class. Um, you do need to remain logged in and actively participating during the entire class. You'll complete that ASHA bubble sheet form, and that's in the materials link. And then the feedback survey that I mentioned that will pop up at the close of the course, you will need to finish to complete that. And I think that's all the housekeeping, so I'm going to turn it over to Jane. Excellent. Thank you, Beth. And Welcome everybody, I'm so glad you're here. So I am Jane Odom and basically I run the AAC Language Lab for PRC Saltillo. I've been with the company uh, close to 20 years. It's pretty exciting. Um, I was told by a device user in the UK that I'm the OG, I'm the old guard. So <laughs> because I've been around a while. Um, I am a, um, a full-time employee of PRC Saltillo. So I am also employee owner. And I am a member of Isaac and Uzac and ISTE. So today, my friends, we are going to go into the lab a little bit deeper than a general overview. And we're going to look specifically at some of the activities and resources that are available for you. So we're going to look at some lessons and help you plan when to use di different lesson plans. We're going to look at the language stages, the screener, core word starter sets, some lesson plans and activities, resources, and then we'll have time at the end for questions. So if, if you're chatting out a question and it's a good time, Beth will interrupt me and to ask that question, if I'm kind of on a roll and we're right in the middle of something, she will definitely save those till the end and we will get your question, all your questions answered for sure. All right, and again, um, as she said, th your comments are gonna be really, really important, especially to me, um, to make sure that um, the training is, is meeting what you need it to do and if you have any other ideas, you know, like check them out there because we read every single one of those and take those, um, those very seriously. All right, so we are going to look today at determining language stages and how to determine where on the lab things are based on language stages and what your um, student is able to do. And then you will also look at um, those language objectives and figure out how to determine which objective to use with your student. And then we will also look at a variety of different support materials. And then also a brand new feature of the Language Lab is creating your own smart chart generator. So you're making your own smart chart. So how, if you are a Mac user and you're totally frustrated because um, you know, past software or chat editors, you know, you only have it on PC and you want to be able to make smart charts, this is for you. So we're really excited about that. So we'll go into that later on today. So the Language Lab is based on Brown stages of language development. So this little chart is in your handout. You can also download it directly from the site in the resource section. And so um, I like to have this a little bit bigger and I have it hanging in my office so that I can refer to this at all times. So Brown has 
five stages of language development. And we on the language lab have six stages. And the reason being is that we took that first stage and we kind of broke it up into two stages. Because when a student is using AAC, they're not learning language any differently. They just may learn it at a slower pace. So that stage one is there when they get that device and they're learning where those basic core vocabulary words are. So that's basically trying to, you know, to teach them, you know, the basic core words. And then stage two is when they start putting those two words together. So some students may don't even need to be on stage one. And then other students, you know, may spend a little bit more time in stage one. So there is no specific time frame for any student. It's all based on individuality. So each student is going to be very, very different. And you'll see that we try to offer a ton of things in the lab to hold on to students based on their interests, their age, you know, what they're working on in school. So we have a lot of those resources for you. OK, so where I like to get started is the core word starter set. So this is a lesson plan that is based on 25 words that we think at PRC Saltillo are most frequently learned first. So we've done all the research for you and we put these lesson plans on the site and I'm going to show that to you. Let's see if I can do this guys. I am looking for this one. Please look at that. So <laughs> I can come on to the language lab home screen right here. All right. And so we've got, you know, all kinds of information on here, but we have this getting started section. And so this is where you're going to find the information on those language stages, you know, a little bit more in depth. But this is also where I can find that core word starter set of lesson plans. So all of these lesson plans are free. So this is a part of this site that is free. I will tell you that the site is a subscription, but guys, it's $20 for the whole entire year. So it's less than a cup of coffee a month to get access to all of the, all of the stuff that is under the subscription. Um, if you are supporting a student that is getting a new PRC or Saltillo device, then there is a code in the box that they can, mom and dad can use it, or they can actually share it with anybody at a school or their therapist um, to have free access to, to the lab for a whole entire year. All right, so you get two codes in the box, one for the language lab and one for Realize. So when do I use the core word starter set? I might use this when a student is first starting out or if a student maybe is trialing a device. So oftentimes, depending on what insurance and what funding you may have, um, you may have to look at multiple devices. So these are great lesson plans that you literally can use with any device. Now I'm gonna tell you that the AAC Language Lab is sponsored by PRC Saltillo. So yes, there are supports here for our devices, but guess what? Most of the Language Lab is just words, which means you can use it with any device. And so um, you can use it with any AAC device, but I also have English as a second language teachers that come here because they like the, the way the stages um, are and the language objectives are spelled out. And so they know when is it time to introduce prepositions? When do we look at past tense verbs? And so they often use this site for that as well. All right, so these are again, free lesson plans. And so let's take a look at one. We go into um, stop, go fast, slow. And all of the lesson plans are formatted the exact same way on the site. So you're going to have in the blue box over here on the right, you'll have your language objective and then you have data collection sheets. Now these data collection sheets are only available in the core word starter set. They're in the resource section, but they're also here. Um, you can get them to very, very easily directly from the lesson plan itself. So the, this one looks like uh, I'm coming here. I'm opening it up. There we go. This is what you will see when you download that. And these are the words that you can look at. So you can mark down when it has been modeled, all right, when, when you've prompted the child, like you're kind of pointing at it, or when, they, when they're hitting S, when they're doing it spontaneously. So there's no prompting at all. And so here are these 25 words, and these words are all addressed in those lesson plans. And so you can kind of, you know, check this off and use this maybe, um, Depending on your funding source, if they will accept something like this, you could use it to prove that the device was being used. You can show how well for your own self, which device was being utilized better. So if you're trialing different devices, this is a nice way you can have a sheet for each device and see which one the student interacts with more. So this is available in the core word starter set. So we look at the objectives, we have these data collection sheets. It's gonna tell you in every lesson plan what materials you need. 
So in this one, we, we have games with sidewalk chalk and cars and balloons. There's target vocabulary. So the target vocabulary are the words that we are working on. All right, and then we have a realized language tip. So if you are doing data logging, um, you can kind of get a tip here for what you might want to look for while doing this lesson plan. And then down here, look at this, we can click smart chart. So if we look up here, we have go, stop, up, down, fast, and slow as the words that we're working on. And when I click on this button, now I can pick what language system I'm working on. Now this again is going to be for PRC Sotelo um, since we have the legal rights to use our icons. So other devices, we don't necessarily, um, we can't use the, um, the, the icons if we don't own the rights to them. So that's how that is. So we have Sotillo word power with PCS symbols, Sotillo word power with symbol sticks, Unidad, Unity. We have word power with PRC symbols and words for life. So say I'm using words for life. I can click on there and I can say, oh, I'm using 84 full with my student. And now I'm going to download this smart chart and boom, very easily. Now you have the icon paths for all of those different words. So these are all high resolution graphics. So I can have this printed out or um, I can have this on my tablet. I can share this with the student. I can cut this up and make little word strips. I can give this to the um, assistant that was working with the student. So maybe the classroom assistant or the teacher who may not be as familiar with the device that may need a little bit of help. So this is available on all the different lesson plans and activities that have the target vocabulary words. All right. And so you again, PRC, Saltillo, that's going to be just for that. All right. Then when we come over here, we can download everything all at once. So if you want to have everything in that lesson plan, one easy click, that's where you're going to go. You can also have a printed copy of the lesson plan. So if you are a traveling therapist or, you know, you don't feel like carrying a lot of paper in the classroom, you're trying to save the earth, Earth Day is next week, guys. Um, you can have this as a PDF and have it on your tablet or on your phone or on your computer. All right. So. And then there's also a flip book with all the lesson plans. And these are just little books that are kind of animated. So they kind of like make a swishing sound as you're turning the page. And some of the, it's just another way to read one of the books that's with the, with the lesson plan itself. And some of the kids really enjoy this, right? So there's going to be speaking goals. And so when I go to the speaking section, I can hit the show more and it's going to drop down and give me all these different activities that I can do to encourage the child to speak. Another way to learn language is through reading. And so there's always a book that's available or multiple books, which we'll look at. And then there's writing activities. So these writing templates, and we're going to look at a couple of these later, um, we're going to do a couple together. So it's going to be kind of fun. But they're all interactive PDF files. So if you have a student that has a high-end device that has the ability to do computer emulation, then the, you can use the device as an alternative keyboard. So oftentimes um, I, I'm trying to get kids in middle school excited <laughs> about using AAC. And sometimes that's when kids like they don't want to look any different than their peers. And so they kind of like, all right, I don't want to use the device anymore. But when they see this being used, it, it can be really, really exciting for them because they're putting in their icon sequences there, and it's coming up as text within the template itself. So it might be a little bit motivating for them. And we'll look at a couple of these in a little bit. And then there's extension activities, which are going to be your games. All right. And it may be a link to a video. It may be um, like just all different kinds of activities that you can do. So this one, you're actually building a, a little car with a balloon on it and making it go. So you can utilize stop, go fast and slow with that activity. All right. So these are the core word starter set. And I get here by going to getting started and I hit core word starter set. But what if my student maybe has had a device for a while or maybe this is a new student to me and, I, you know, and I've got some you know, notes on it, but I'm notes on the he or she, but I'm not for sure where they are. I can use this language screener. So this is kind of cool because I'm here in Arizona and um, I work in a, um, Arizona has a lot of kids using AAC and we have a lot of districts that are really, really good at supporting our students. And I went in to do some training with a little guy that had just got his um, communication device and they were handing out this sheet of paper based on the language lab and based on all the language objectives that are on the lab. And I'm like, what are you guys doing? And the AT specialist was like, oh, well, this is just to make sure everybody's on the same page. And so they handed it out and I'll show you what it looks like. 
and they were able to check it off and just making sure like where do you think Johnny is what does he already know and what does he sort of know and what has he mastered and 99% of them came back exactly the same so not only was everybody on the same page but people could see what the next step was going to be because it was all organized by those language stages so you have a printed version that you can download here but we're going to go through this wizard and we are going to do Zeus. So you may hear Zeus in the background. If FedEx comes, this is my dog. He's a very good communicator. <laughs> he certainly lets me know when the mailman is here. So when I'm going through this with a student, if a student just got a device, I may just you know start off and only do like one or two stages. If I have a student that may be a little bit older or is moving from um, one system to a new system, they may have some splinter skills. So I may want to go ahead and do the whole entire screener. So I can check off, okay, Zeus regularly communicates. He directs my actions all the time. He expresses negatives and he tells me no, and he makes requests. But then when we get to the point where it's two words, you know, he may occasionally do something or never do something. So I start to fill this out. And when I get to the point, I'm actually gonna change this. I'm gonna get to the point where I'm hitting all nevers and I hit next. It's going to give me this little green box here and it says, okay, based on your responses, you can either finish it now. And so I can hit finish or you can hit next and go through all six stages. So again, if you think your student may have splinter skills, so maybe, you know, they already know their prepositions, you might want to document that within the screener because what happens when we hit finish is not only is it going to take us to this little result page where we have suggestions of where to start on the lab, I can also download these results. So now I have a documentation of where Zeus is currently on April the 15th, All right. So I may wanna keep this in his, you know, as a PDF, I can save this as a PDF. I may keep this in a folder somewhere and do this periodically so we can show progress for an IEP meeting. Um, I may want to send this home so mom can see what we're doing. So it's just a really nice way to kind of keep track of what you're working on. One thing that I have found based on like the analytics from the website is that we have, especially in the beginning of the school year, everybody seems to be on stages one and two. And some of these kids have already done this. You know, So it would be nice if we had this day to follow the student so the teacher didn't have to reteach everything at the beginning of the school year. Uh, and maybe that student is ready to move on to stages three or four, all right? So this is going to show me where on the, 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 the language lab to start. So this is our lesson plans. So it wants me to start um, two to three word phrases, or I can come down here to activities. So lesson plans are the ones that we just looked at, very comprehensive. Activities are just one, one little activity. So you got 15, 20 minutes, you wanna do something, that's what you can work on. All right, so we are going to look at another lesson plan, um, not one of these, but I'm gonna show you how to get to the lesson plans. If I'm going in and I've already done the screener and I know what I'm, I'm looking for. So I can come up here to this drop down menu and click lesson plan. So when I click this lesson plan, now it's gonna show me all the lesson plans for the different stages. And I can just click on any of these boxes at the top to go to the different stages. All right, so if I'm looking for something specific, we do have these filters. So I can filter for Spanish materials, young adult materials, mobile lesson plans, which are based on apps, or um, <laughs> lesson plans that have been anglicized for the UK. So English in the UK is a bit different. So with any of our, our friends here from across the pond, um, we have the proper spelling in here. Um, so there'll be different variations of maybe a book or a game that has the proper spelling or the proper usage of the words as, as they would be used in the UK, right? Um, if you're using these, I highly suggest that you clear a filter before you click a new one, all right? So always use this clear button. And then we can look for specific vocabulary we may be working on, and we can look, work for, um, look for concepts, colors, shapes, something like that, all right? Um, this is also another link to the core word starter set. So we've got a couple different ways to get places. But we're going to look at about me, all about me. This is one of my go to lessons when a student first gets a device because it kind of helps me organize what I might need to add to that device. You know, you're going to want the kid's name in there. You're going to want, you know, 
um, brothers and sisters names, you're going to want their favorite foods, you know, the things that are going to get them excited about communicating. So we're going to look at this lesson plan. And again, we can see we have an objective. We have all of the materials that we need. We have target vocabulary words. We have a realized tip and then a smart chart. All right. Um, we are going to come in here and look at this book. So if we look at the books here in this lesson plan, wow, we have five versions of the same book. Why in the world would we do that? Well, we have All About Me, the standard book. And if you can see here, this is Sally, and she's looking in the mirror there. Um, and she's a cartoon. So that may not be age appropriate for some of our older students. So we have a young adult version, which is going to have age appropriate graphics. So these graphics are going to be photographs that are more age appropriate. So you're not doing like, you know, a cartoon with, with a 16 year old. Okay, so we really want to respect their age. Um, we also have one that's fillable. So now the student can read the first part of the story and then finish the story using their device to talk about themselves. So that's when we want to make sure that we have their name in there, where they live, and, and those kinds of things. And then we have a UK version, which again is going to have um, English in, uh, that's been anglicized for England. All right. And then a, a young adult version of the, of the UK one. All right. So let's look at this fillable version. So we have all about me and we go through here. We've got our word bank. I am special, can't you see? When I look in the mirror, I see someone special, me. And so now you can add a picture of that student's person or <laughs> a picture of that student. All right, so let's chat it out, my friends. What is your favorite color? So if we were gonna write this book for you, what color would you want as your favorite color? And so Beth, when you get a good one, chat that out for us. We're getting lots of colors. I'm seeing a lot of purple though. Purple. Now you, you, know, you can get in here and change the size of the font and whatever you want. Um, but we're, we're just gonna go really quick for now. Okay, and what are some of your favorite foods? What do you guys like to eat? Oh, I see tacos. I like tacos too. Today's not Tuesday, but I live in Arizona. We have like really, really, really good tacos here. <laughs> All right, next one. I am, oh, all right, here's a loaded question. How old are you? Oh, we got some brave people answering. <laughs> that one said 100 million. <laughs> okay, so let's put that one in there. We got, you know, we got 100 million years old. I'm glad you're here for us and you're paying attention. Well done. And then your favorite book. Who's got a favorite book? Gone with the Wind, Wizard of Oz, Cat in the Hat. This is fabulous. Look at all these great books. All right, that's an easy one to spell. I'm gonna do Hamlet. <laughs> Look at this, oh, we've got awesome, awesome, awesome. And then we're gonna move down here to the next one. And uh-oh, when you go to the zoo, what do you wanna see at the zoo? Oh, look at this. We got a lot of monkeys and zebras and pandas. This is fabulous. So we're going to just hit monkey here. All right, but you can see how this might be really fun for a kid. If we want to get them motivated to talk, yeah, let them talk about themselves. That's going to really motivate them. And the beauty of this is there's no right or wrong answers. It's going to be all according to what the student likes. So what is something that you like to say? We got hi, howdy. Oh, that's fabulous. All right, I like howdy. That's a wonderful one. So what I suggest is when you finish this story is that you definitely, definitely print this out and have it in the classroom library. So when we have done this with students in the past, um, these books are always the ones that are read the most in the library. Like I'll get there at the end of the school year and these are dog-eared and kind of like beat up because the kids love to read a story that they wrote themselves. Now this one is super simple, so you can use this with a beginning communicator. Um, and, it, you know, they're going to be part of that classroom. So it's really, really fun. All right. So, again, we have at the very bottom, we have, again, some extension activities here. We have a writing template, but you can see there's different variations. So we have bingo and dominoes here, and we have bingo with symbol sticks, bingo, bingo with unity symbols, and then we have a plain one that you can use. So maybe you don't need um, icon support, 
for the student, or maybe you're working on a different device, or you're playing this game with the whole entire class, and some of the kids in the class don't need to have the specific pictures match a device, so you can use that generic one. And then here at the bottom of every lesson plan, we have a homework card. So you can actually send the homework card home. And these activities on the homework card are going to be really, really simple five to 10 minute activities that mom and dad can do at home. And what we're trying to do is encourage them to get that device out of the book bag. And maybe that will remind them to plug it in, right? And then some things that they can do at home. So everybody's working on the same goals at the same time. So mom and dad will know exactly what you're working on based on these homework cards. And we have these guided lessons at the bottom. So if the student needs more practice, you just click here. If they're ready to move on to the next objective, you click here. And then down here at the bottom, if you are a state that is using Common Core standards, we have all of the grade levels here. Um, just to let you guys know, this is 30 days of my life I will never get back. So that was a long 30 days. <laughs> but we have all the Common Core standards ready and waiting for you. All right. So we're going to play a fun game now. Um, that's in one of the lesson plans, which I think is another important thing to add on when a, a student first gets their device. So there is a game called Slang It. And Slang It is when you want to put the cool things that kids say to each other on their device. All right, so this is not proper English. This is the fun words, all right? And so when we have slang, we usually have positive, neutral, and negative. So for example, a positive word might be um, cool. And a neutral word might be okay. I don't know why that did that. Shouldn't, ah, it's doing it everywhere. And a negative word might be yuck, you know, whatever. All right, so we're gonna change these out. I want you guys, let's say, um, think about where you live and how old your student is, and what would be the positive word that they might use. So think about, and it's gonna be different, and it may change all the time. So you may have a first grader saying one thing, and you may have a 16-year-old saying something else. Okay, Jane, we've got sweet, dope. Oh my gosh, these, I have to fix this. This is all changing. This is doing the same thing, okay. Lit. Lit? Mm-hmm. Oh, I great. <laughs> All right, and then we're going to try neutral. What would be some neutral things that you might say? I'll tell you what the te the teenage thing that I was when I was working with the high schoolers, the girls would always go, "Whatever." Yeah, somebody said whatevs. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> whatevs. So so. Okay. Oh, these are great. Yeah. These are fabulous. Sure. All right, and then think of some negative ones. Oh, meh. I like the meh one. <laughs> These are wonderful. All right. So what we did with, um, I had this wonderful young uh, middle schooler, and she was named Sydney. She is named Sydney. And so Sid um, had a device, and she was a scanner, and um, she was she was challenging because she was two switch step scanning, and she was fully mainstreamed. And so what we wanted to do with Sid was we wanted to give her um, you know, some social skills. And so what we did was we started a lunch group with her. So once a week, these girls would all get together and they would have lunch together. And so this was middle school. And Sid got to pick the girls that, that she wanted in the group and the girls had to agree and, you know, everything was fine. And so we were showing them, teaching them about the device. And so we had them practice scanning on her device and the kids were all like, oh my gosh, this is really hard. She must be really smart. And we were like, ah, yeah, absolutely. Well, it takes her a long time to say things. And so what they were able to do was um, then became her advocate in the classroom. And so, um, so they were kind of telling the teacher, reminding the teacher, oh, you know what? Sydney knows the answer to that. So why don't you just give her a minute? She can find that. So one of the activities we did was we, we did slang. We asked all the kids to come in and have their favorite slang word. And we recorded, each girl recorded their, their word onto Sydney's device. Okay. So then Sydney had all these really cool words to use. And then what she did was, all by herself, she started greeting the kids by their recording. 
So she knew which girl recorded which word. And when she saw them in the hallway, she would activate that. And the kids absolutely loved it. So it was like this really win-win situation. The girls were learning to be um, considerate and to be her advocate for her. And they learned all about AAC and different disabilities. And the, and Sydney just got like this immediate group of friends that included her and everything. So it was absolutely wonderful. Now we had that set up by a student teacher uh, on purpose. So we asked the student teacher to be the lunch leader because she was a cool college kid. And so she would come in and tell all, all the girls about her boyfriend troubles. And it was just this cohesive group that was really, really fun. So um, I, totally encourage you to do you know even if a group is super small so we set up one group in uh, for a kindergartner she just had one kid in her group and so they those two became really good friends right so we're going to now also do so we're going to look at activities on the lab and activities again are these just you know they're a, a game or a writing template or a book or, or some kind of activity that you can do. And so you have, say, five or 10 minutes that's not planned for, you can go and grab an activity to do. Um, oh my, the bus is late, you know? And a lot of these activities can be do done with a big group of kids. So you can have the student that's using a device play some of these games with, you know, other kids in their class, maybe that are verbal or, or whatever, all right? Jane, so sometimes we're seeing, your, we're seeing your slide deck. I think you might want us to see. Nope, we're, we're looking at the slide deck right now. Okay, okay, perfect. Yep, yeah, we're getting there. All right, so once, what, what I like to do is organize my thoughts. I mean, I'm all over the place. And so, you know, I'd like, I like always need a reminder. And so the Give Me Five activities are going to allow me to pick whatever activity I want to do and then choose core words that can go with that so that I know what words I'm working on. So let's take a look at this. And I this is in your handout, in your workbook. And so the Give Me Five activity, let's find my mouse again. You guys, I'm doing two monitors. So I always have a hard time finding my, <laughs> finding my mouse. Okay, so let's pick a toy that we wanna play with. So who wants to chat out a fun toy for a kid? Mr. Potato Head. That's the first one I saw. So if I was going to play Mr. Potato Head with my student, what are some core vocabulary words that I can work on? Now, this is not like body parts and colors. These are going to be fringe vocabulary. What are some core words we could? Oh, we have put and on and off. Oops, that was supposed to be on. And off. And mine, I love it. And so now we have our words all done. Me, you guys are popping out great words. This is awesome. So now I'm disorganized. And now I know that when I'm playing Mr. Potato Head, these are the words that I can work on. So now I can have the supports for that. I can make sure that all the staff know where those words are so I could use that smart chart generator and create a smart chart. All right. But this Give Me Five activity is available like in the activity section as well as in our resource section. And then you have it in your workbook that you can utilize this for every activity that you do. And it really kind of helps organize things. All right. Another thing that's nice about this activity is you can change the words up because you saw how many words people said. So you could say, here's my core words for Mr. Potato Head. And then maybe in two weeks, you add, you change those up and put some different words on there. So you can exactly. make more of these for one activity. Exactly. Exactly. All right, and, and then if you organize, so I have one teacher, she's great. She's got these tubs in her room that organizes all the toys. And so they keep the give me five cards in each box with the toy so that if staff grabs it, they know what words they can work on, okay? All right, so one of our really fun activities is this monster. And the making monster is you're gonna just get um, construction paper. And so you may have a bunch of shapes cut out, you may have different body parts um, cut out already. And so the student is gonna take the time and put their monster together. And then we're gonna use a writing template that we have along with this. And we're gonna write about our monster. So then we're gonna start thinking about describing and talking about our monster. So once you have your monster done, this writing template, allows you to say everything that your monster is. My monster is 
So everybody kind of picture a monster in your head. So if you were like going to pick your, your favorite monster. My monster is silly. My monster is huge. My monster is purple. Oh, very good. Ugly. Oh, my, my, my monster is gorgeous. Ugly. <laughs> Whatever you want to say. All right, we need more stinky. Oh, I like that word. That's a good one. All right. So now you're talking about like describing your monster. So you can, you know, kind of give conceptually, like show the student where things are on their device that they can use. They can look at feelings. They can look at colors. They can look at describing words. All right. Now think of something that your monster has. My monster has teeth. My monster has three eyes. I think you're looking at the monster that's on there. My monster has horns. And fur. Oh, I like a furry monster. My monster has what was that? Big lips, <laughs> long, bad breath. Oh, that one's even better. Okay. <laughs> and so now you're going to have a lot of fun with this. So the kids, I mean, there are no right or wrong answers. So they can kind of come up with whatever they want. And this can get really, really, really silly. So it can be a lot of fun. And that's what we want to do. When the kids don't realize that they're, they're working, um, and they think they're playing a game, you're going to have some incredible learning. Now we're going to work on action words. What are some things that the monster can do? Dance. I and, think I saw eat the teacher. <laughs> oh, I like that. Okay. <laughs> See, we're having fun with this. This is yeah. oh, the, that's what I was kind of thinking. Turn upside down, wiggle. Oh, I like wiggle. That's a good word. All right, and my, my monster can fly. Well done, guys. This is, oh, breathe, fire, swim. These are fabulous. So you can see that now we can teach the concept of action words as well. And so we can show them how to find verbs depending on their device. All right. So that is just another one of, you know, the really kind of fun things. So this, but this activity has a lot of components to it. So, you know, you're making the monster and the kid or the students can talk about what shapes they want, what colors they want, what body parts they want, put it on, put it there, move it, turn it, all these different concepts. So we could do that gimme five activity and come up with some concepts that we're working on and then follow up with this writing template. The kids are actually talking about the monsters that they, they created. So really, really kind of fun. All right. We're going to keep on moving now. So this one is a video. And uh, fortunately, Beth told me that the sound is not going to play really well. So I'll explain this to you. So this is Monster Mouth. And this is one of my favorite go-to activities. And I developed this one. Most of my activities I have literally tried with kids. So I've done it with um, you know, students to see, make sure that they were kid friendly and that they were engaging. So when I was in a classroom, it was um, a middle school. And the teacher was freaking out because she had four kids using AAC and each kid was on a different system and on a different language level. <laughs> so they kids, we had Steven who had had his device for a really long time. We had um, Kevin who just got his accent and he was using Unity. Steven was using um, Words for Life. Kimmy had her Nova chat for a little while and she was using um, word power and then we had another student on the touch chat app so all the students were doing something different and the teacher's like oh my gosh I can I do this and it's like you know what it's just words it's just words you don't have to be afraid of this now she ended up um it was a really poor district in Phoenix she ended up writing a grant to the baseball team the Diamondbacks and got a smart board in the classroom so she would show pass software or the chat editor software on the big pass screen so that they could model directly on the screen and by the end of the school year all the kids knew all the different <laughs> they could all speak on either all of the different devices like it just didn't matter the aides knew what they were doing and it was fabulous so i went in with this crazy monster and you're going to see that this monster is is very expensive i went to the grocery store and i got you know just a couple of free grocery bags all right so you can see that i took two of them and i put one inside the other and then we cut a big mouth out of the um, out of the monster, and we decorated it. So when I went in there, I had a very plain monster. And after they started playing this game, uh, I came in like a month later, and they had lipstick on it and ears with ear bobs on it. Oh my gosh, it was crazy! So basically, what we did, you can see, I have three different colors in front of the the monster, and each of these are scrap papers. And the goals on each one is based on 
the student that's playing. So Kevin had the white cards and Kimmy had the red cards and Stephen had the blue cards. So um, one student was working on past tense verbs, one student was working on prepositional phrases, and then one student was just working on those single words. So each one was working on something different, but they were playing the same game. So they would pick a card and they would, um, and so they, there we have the smart charts that we use the smart chart generator for. And so we had an individual one for each one of the students. So depending on what device they were using and what language level they were using. All right. So when we played the game, the student got to pick a piece of paper and then do whatever they needed to do on their device, either find the word, find a prepositional phrase, use a word in a sentence, find the past tense, whatever it was. And once they got it, if they added it correctly, they got to throw that into the mouth. Oh my goodness, these kids had on their IEP that they would attend for maybe five to 10 minutes on a task. And we played this game for 45 minutes and they did not want to stop. They had so much fun because they got to throw something in the classroom. So these were middle schoolers. And then again, the teacher kept the monster. I was like, oh, yep, that's donated to you because it costs absolutely nothing to put together. And she used that for math. And so they would get their math problem. If they got it right, they got to throw it into the monster. They used it for spelling words. They used it for all kinds of other activities. And they played that game the whole entire year. So this is called repetition, repetition with variety. They're playing that same game uh, all, for all kinds of different language objectives or actually educational objectives. They know the rules of the game, so they're just simply like doing different outcomes, okay? So they absolutely love this game. And again, I mean, I wish I had a picture of the finished one that they did because it had lipstick and they had false eyelashes on it and it was absolutely so much fun and the kids loved it. All right, so that is Monster Mouth. All right. So another one, I like to find really, really kind of fun and engaging games. So this one is called Smash Mat. And what we have here is we have um, the Smash Mat board and all it has is circles with words in it. So you can do this, you know, a million different ways. So you can change the words out. You can change, you know, whatever you want. So if you have this one printed and you want to change it, you can just put a sticker over top of it or you can go in there and edit it, whatever you want to do. So each one has a Play-Doh ball on top of it. And so basically what the student does is they pick one of the snowballs and they lift it up and they find that word. And maybe Kevin is just finding the word. Kimmy is using the word in a phrase. Steven's using the word, maybe he's finding the plural, maybe he's using it in a sentence, depending on you know what each student is working on. And so they use that, so that one I used it in a sentence and if I get it right, Guess what I get to do? Oh, you get to smash it. <laughs> so it's Play-Doh and they get to make it, they get to mush it out and um, then pick another one. And so again, super simple concept, really silly, and they're doing something surprising. When, a, when do you get to smash something in the classroom? And so uh, again, you can play this that repetition with variety. You can play it a variety of different ways, but the kids are very active. They're getting to mush something. Play-Doh smells good, it, it, it feels good. So it can be very, very engaging. All right. Okay. And then I'm still coming here. We've got one more. Okay. So this, you guys, is one of my favorites. <laughs> so we, this is from, um, I did. I do camp every summer. So if you're on the language lab in the summertime, every week we have a whole set of thematic activities that go up based on something fun. So this was um, the bug week we were doing all kinds of cool activities about bugs and this was the stem project that we did so i went to the dollar store because i don't like to spend a lot of money i don't know about you guys go to the dollar store and i got the glass plate okay and so what we did was we talk about bugs and asked the student okay how many bugs do you want on your plate do you want a big bug do you want a little bug do you want a medium bug um, do you want a blue bug, a green bug? So you have all the bugs and you're going to take a dry erase marker. So here we go. We're talking about what kind of bugs do we want? All right, so we're modeling for the student and they can tell us we're taking a dry erase marker and simply drawing on the glass plate. 
So we're going to draw out our bugs and you guys can have a lot of fun with this. You just need to make sure that the ink is touching. So if you put legs on it, it has to be touching the body. All right, so we draw our bugs. Are you guys excited about what's going to happen? Let's see. Then I just take a cup of water and I tell the student, look, what do you think is going to happen? So we talk about like, what do you think? And let's, what do you, and you ask them, all right, what, if I pour water on here, what do you think is going to happen? And we can, you know, talk about that and ask them if they're ready. And then we pour the water on. What's going to happen? Oh my goodness. Ah, they float. <laughs> Is that the coolest thing? I just think that's hysterical. So this is absolutely mesmerizing. They can play it a hundred different ways. You can use it with bugs. You can use it with you know letters. You can use it with numbers. Whatever you want to do. Simple, simple concept. Glass plate, dry erase markers, and water. That's all you need. All right. So this is one of my favorite ones. And I, you know, like my my son is 22, and I was so excited to show him this, and he's just like rolling his eyes, like mom, really? And I'm like, look how cool this is. Yeah, he was not impressed. <laughs> All right. So activities on the language lab, let me show you where those are and some of the different things that we can do. Um, oops, hold on one second. There we go. So when I want to work on an activity, I come up here to this toolbar and I hit activities. And so now the activities again are divided up by stage and by language objective. All right, so if I'm in, you know, stage three, I can see, whoops, we're, we're in, go down, please, thank you. All right, so I, I can go to stage three, and then I can see that there are simple sentences, adding more words, you know, ongoing actions, prepositions, you know, everything is right there. If I'm looking for something specific, it's a little bit different with activities, is we have filters. So you can certainly search for target vocabulary words or for keywords, but I can also use this filter to look for specific things. So maybe I'm looking for a writing template or a game or a craft, or maybe I'm looking for something for social emotional or cooking, or maybe I'm looking for something for a subject area, an age level, or a holiday or season, okay? So, you know, it's, it's Earth Day, so that's in the spring, so I click on my spring filter, and you can see here, that I have activities that I could use for Earth Day. And so you would find them in the different stages, okay? So it's really kind of fun to get in here. There are um, tons and tons of activities for you to choose here. There are all kinds of things. Um, so if you think about what your student really enjoys, so you know maybe they like cars and trucks, or maybe they like being out at the playground, so you can find things that are outdoors, indoors, all kinds of stuff. All right. So I, I'm blessed because I moved to Arizona in 2004 and I was immediately invited to go to something called Out and About. And Out and About is a community group that is run by a couple therapists. And you may know these names, Dr. Caroline Musselwhite and Deanna Wagner. And I was like, OK, I'm going to go to this. And so this was a group that met in the afternoon after school. And so kids Maybe they're kind of, you know, secluded in their classroom. Maybe they're the only kid using AAC. So this group was a great way for them to network with other kids using AAC. Parents came, um, whole families came sometimes. And we would do something out in the community and encouraging the kids to talk to um, people that may not know what AAC is. So we might go to the food court at a mall and they would have to go up and order their own food. So they were talking to somebody who maybe never even seen high school kid that maybe never saw a communication device before and it helped them to you know become better communicators and it also helped the families kind of network all right so we were doing um one of our out and abouts and caroline had this great idea like oh we're gonna write poetry and i'm like poetry so i'm thinking like emily dickinson and robert frost i'm like mm, yeah i don't think so but no columns are easy and it's really nice because poetry is, is the only time a student really, like one of the few times a student can freely express themselves where there's no right or wrong answers. So a poem can be very complex, like, you know, Emily Dickinson, or it can be very simple. So you can do a simple list poem where they only list five words. So we've done Mother's Day activities where we made bookmarks and each child had to come up with 
five words to describe mom. And so most of the time when I'm doing this, I have no idea what the student is talking about. So little Rebecca said bleachers, fire, um, hot dogs, and you know, apple and something else. And I was like, okay, none of that made sense to me. But when mom saw it, she was like, oh my God, they had just gone camping. And so they sat on the bleachers, they had a campfire and they, you know, they cooked burgers and they ate apples. And so everything was meaningful for her. So it was fabulous. So in this, part of the activity section we have all the stages but we also have all levels and that means that these are going to be games like monster mouth that can be played with students on a variety of different levels it just doesn't matter and so we can hit show more down here and there are a ton of these all right so there's all kind there's a floating bugs experiment right there all right and so there's all kinds of really cool templates and games there's monster mouth that you can play with your student Okay, all kinds of really cool stuff. So we're gonna do a poem right now together as a group. And again, I've done these poems um, at Out and About, I've done them in the classroom, and I've done them at camp. So what we did at camp was we wrote one together. Everybody that was at camp wrote one together so the students understood how the concept worked. And then we went and worked individually with students so they could write their own poem, all right? So let's do this one. If we're going to write a poem about hope, and some of these concepts are kind of fun. You could do hopes, you could do dreams, um, you know, whatever you wanted. But if hope was a sound, chat out, what do you think hope would sound like? A bird singing. Well done, Paige. A waterfall. Oh, I like that one. A waterfall, a river, ocean waves. Oh, these are fabulous. Well done. Okay, child giggling, wind chimes. This is great. Okay, next one. If hope was a color, what color would hope be? Periwinkle. Oh, I have to choose periwinkle. <laughs> I don't think that's on a device, but that's a good color. A rainbow. All right, these are fabulous. Now, if hope was a feeling, what would it feel like? Joyful and calm. Joy. Wind in your hair, that's fabulous. A hug, oh gosh, it's COVID. I haven't had a hug in forever. <laughs> right? I, and so again, there's no right or wrong answer. So the student really, really gets to express themselves. Okay, guys, if hope was a taste, what would it taste like? Sweet, like chocolate. Oh, there you go, that's, that's all my ice cream. Dinner, dinner rolls, Evelyn, my goodness. <laughs> Cotton candy, that's great. And then if hope was a smell, what would it smell like? Oh, bread baking, that's fabulous. Lilacs, fresh air, that's wonderful. You know, cut grass, I love the smell of cut grass. All right, so this is something really fun that you can do. And then you can print these poems out and the student can have their own book of poetry. And so not only can they save their poetry, but you can have maybe on Fridays poetry slam where they get to read the poems to each other. And, and or maybe go to the kindergarten class and read their poems to the kindergartners. So there's a lot of really cool activities that can be gotten from this. So one of the poems that, that we worked with in the middle school class that I was in was an I like poem, but very, very simple. I like blank, I like blank, I like blank, I don't like blank. So you can use this for, for a pronoun phrase. We're learning I like and, we can, and I don't like. We can also say like you go, she goes, um, I want, I need. So you can do all different pronoun phrases. Again, repetition with variety. We're writing the same poem a variety of different ways. But as I was talking about getting the students to express themselves, we did this I did a, a sample lesson with the teacher and then I left and the teacher emailed me later because she did the I like poem with the kids and she said, I'm crying a river. So there was a young woman who, um, who had autism in the classroom who had some pretty severe behaviors and her name was Genesis and Genesis wrote, I like Kim, I like Kevin, I like Delfino, I don't like me. And the teacher was just so upset and I was like, okay, she totally expressed herself. We would have never known that about her if we didn't give her a way to, to write about it. And so then we were able to work on self-esteem. We were able to, we realized like the kids, made, they were picking on her and she would get so angry. And so she would act out. And so we were able to kind of build up her self-esteem once we knew about it. 
So it was um, pretty eye-opening as, as far as getting a kid. It is profound, right? It's very profound and very sad, but it was awesome because she now was able to let us know and we were able to help her, which is you know, really cool. The other thing I like about those poems, Jane, is the fact that it's unique to each person's experience. It's not like a general writing prompt, like, you know, write about this story or write about this object. It's personal to each person. Exactly. And how often do we give our kids um, opportunities to do that? You so know, and again, poetry is open-ended, so there are no right or wrong answers. It's full expression. Yeah, and we, we had that, a question, if I can jump okay. Um, I kind of answered it, but I wanted wanted to give you a chance to answer it too. But basically, they were asking how the kids use their devices to write these answers. So it depended on what device they had. So the students on the iPad, you know, they didn't have the ability to type directly into the template. So we would just transpose it for them. Um, and so they would they would write it on their device, and then we would just fill in the blanks on the paper. But then they saved it in their notebook, so they they were able to read it then you know, from the notebook. And then if the students, if the teacher had time, and again, this, you know, it's middle school and there were 15 kids in the class. So it was always a little bit, you know, a little bit of madness in there. If she had time and she had it up on the computer, then they could use computer emulation and type directly into the template. But if there was no time, the, the aides just transposed it onto the, temp, you know, to the template and, and the kids were able to print that out and save it or, you know, whatever. But um, having that poetry slam, I, I have a pet peeve, guys. All right, this is, and, and you y'all might not disagree, you might not agree with me, but I, I see no reason to do um, 12 years of circle time. It makes me crazy. So when the kids get a little bit older, and sometimes, you know, they, they may act out during circle time because they've done it forever, you know? And so this class, we changed circle time to be a news program. So the kids all were reporters. And they would practice whatever they needed to do all week, and then we would film it on Fridays, and then we'd edit it over the weekend and watch it on Mondays. So each student had a different job. So one got to be um, tell the weather, one got to talk about the lunch menu or something special they were doing, they got to read their poem. So we just filled up the news program with all kinds of cool things, and then one person got to hold the iPad and record it. And it was, it was just so much fun. So there we go. I don't know why, how I got on that tangent. <laughs> All right, so those are activities, okay? And then we're going to go now into resources. So we have a ton of resources that are on the lab, and I wanted to share some of my favorites with you. All right, oh, and where, where are we? Okay, so we have evaluation tools, we have therapy materials, we have language charts, we have manual boards, which we're going to talk about in a minute. See tips if you're doing data logging and then word lists and resources for vocabulary. So many of these are going to be very generic, but some of them are going to be specific to the PRC Saltillo language system. So I'll just let you know that now. All right. So one of my go to ones that I use all the time, especially if I'm doing staff development um, is on here is something called noun town. And so this was developed by myself and another therapist, so my friend Tammy here in Arizona. We um, were trying to kind of talk to teachers that didn't um, quite get why, I mean, nouns are fabulous and we need nouns, absolutely. But um, having a language board with just nouns on it doesn't really do, I mean, there's so many nouns, right? So we were trying to show how important core vocabulary was. So we've developed this book. So let's read this story together. So there is a place called Noun Town, and it is noisy and loud, and no one likes to talk because they don't have much to talk about because they can only use nouns. So here are the kids using their nouns to chat. Gorilla, computer, wrench. <laughs> Not really meaningful. So the kids, Bo Banks and Sally, they decided to take a trip out to the country so they could talk to each other. So off they went to core country. Core country had so many useful words. It was also less noisy so the kids could actually talk to each other. Wow, I like it here. It is nice. We can play a game. It is so quiet. I don't want to go back. Bo, Max, and Sally loved it so much they decided to stay in core country and they talked happily ever after using core vocabulary. So this just kind of like is a really fun little story to kind of illustrate how 
the difference between nouns and the difference between fringe vocabulary, the fringe vocabulary and core vocabulary, and why it's important to, yes, we, we need to learn nouns and teach our students nouns, but we also need to incorporate core in there as well. All right, so if you look in your workbook now, what would the benefit be for saying using that during a staff development? And you can check those answers out. Beth, are you seeing them come in? Um, they're a little quiet. We're waiting for people to give us their ideas. They're thinking. All right. So think about how staff training. Yeah. How could you use noun town to help your staff um, understand? Well, that how else besides staff development? What else could you use it for? So Beth, you you can think of one. <laughs> yeah. I, well, I saw. Uh, yeah. Parent training. I I think peer supports. So it'd be another great way to show classmates. Oh. Um, that's a really good idea. Yeah, and people are saying about helping parents understand um, a good a good example of how limiting nouns can be. Lots of people think it's good for parents. Um, yeah. Oh, ABA therapist. Well done, Mary. Thank you. Change mindset over vocabulary. I think that's a nice one. Excellent. Excellent. So there's a lot of really, really good ideas here. So thank you guys. Perfect. All right. So we are going to move on here now. To um, we've talked about the hope. We talked about noun town. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna put this on hold for one second, and we're gonna talk about manual boards. All right. So manual boards are on the lab, and they're all free. All right. So this is one of the free areas that you can come and you can get um, for all of our devices. So PRC Saltillo devices, but then um, we've got Beth's modeling lanyards are in here. Um, if I go into lamp words for life. I, it was this, excuse me, it's really kind of cool because I have had therapists contact me that were looking for something with in Greek and something in Arabic. So I work directly with these um, with these therapists to put these together for, you know, they don't have AAC really prevalent in Greece or in some of the Arab countries. So we were able to make a nice manual board for that. All right. So if you look in your on your workbook, what ways can we use a manual board? What would we use a manual board for? Why is it important? So you can chat those out. And you guys are fabulous coming up with great ideas. Backup, yep. And the batteries go dead, absolutely. We always wanna have a backup board. We can share them with teachers. Power outages, fabulous. <laughs> Send them home. Yeah, Your mom. Oh, something when the device isn't, um, when you can't take the device like around water or the pool. Yep, these can be laminated. Um, I've, had, I've seen people put them on kickboards. Yeah, I um, put it on a pillowcase for a, a student so that he had I it did, on his I pillow. Have those. I have one on an apron too. So I actually got them printed from Walmart, believe it or not. The wall of the Mart has a great um, photo center. If you go online, there's all kinds of cool things that you can get it printed on. So I did it on an apron, a t-shirt, and a pillowcase. Yeah. So that's really fun. Oh, well, you guys are- and the schools, I had it on a big vinyl roll up piece of vinyl because I shared my therapy room with someone else and I couldn't leave it up um, when I left for the day because we I shared every other day. So I would roll it up on this big vinyl um, poster kind of thing and then I would put it back up when I came in. But I did vinyl because it was lasted so much better than even a laminated poster. And we actually have the file that you can take to Kinko's or your sign, your local sign maker for the playground board. So um, we have those put together for you as well. So all of these manual boards are on here. All these files are free for you. So there's you know stuff for core scanner, there's stuff for essence, all kinds of things ready. Here's another poster size one that is um, ready to get, it's got the vector symbol so it can be expanded without getting pixelated. So you know, get in there and make sure you always, always, always have a backup for a, a communication device because guess what? Things happen. <laughs> things happen all the time. All right. Okay. So I'm gonna show you now our new cool feature um, that is going to be using our, um, using our, ah, finding all my papers, using our um, smart chart generator. So I'm gonna come here up. So there's a couple different ways you can get to the smart chart generator. All right, I can come up here to this little person up on the top right hand corner of every page and I can go to my lab. If I forget that, I can go to the home page. And now you have to have a subscription for this, my friends, I'm sorry, 
but this one, you know, we want you to, to join and I can go here to my lab. This one took a little bit of work from my web guys. I have the best web developers, Hans and, and Jesse are my heroes. So they do things when I can't. So they've taught me to code. So I can do some of the coding on the site, but they have, they, when they're building something like this, they are, they are there. So what we can do is we can say, we wanna create a new smart chart. And so I'm gonna say, all right, I'm gonna use my word power and maybe I wanna do 60 basic and I'm gonna name this. So we're gonna call this fabulous because you guys are fabulous today. And what I'm gonna be able to do is go in and create my own smart chart. Now, just to, ah, where'd it go? I lost it. I'm gonna create my new smart chart. Try this again. Look, well, I'm gonna show you twice how to do this so you don't forget. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna explain this to you that 400 core vocabulary words are in this database, but not every single word is in here because I have to do these by hand. And when I have 30 levels of, of word power, unity, unidad, and words for life that I have to put in here literally icon by icon. So you can make requests um, if you can't find the word that you're looking for. But what we have here is we have um, a noun category smart chart. So if you are working on a, one of the PRC systems where you know the nouns are stored under the different icons, this will kind of tell you what categories are under each not icon. For word power, it's not as, as, as hard. Word power, you just go to groups and you can see all the grouped words in there to find it, all right? So we want to put together, we are going to do one of our gimme five activities. So which, which did we use? We said we were doing Mr. Potato Head. So what words were we? We did put, what else did we say for gimme five? We said on. On. We can do off. More. Yeah. All right, so you can see here, it's generating my smart chart based on the language stage that I'm in or the language level that I'm in. All right, so the next thing I'm going to do, want, okay. So we just got that one typed out. So we'll do this one more. So we do want. And so you saw that I had to pause a little. So give it a little bit of time because it's literally going through all of the, um, the words that are in our database, all right? And so then if I want to say, I wanna save this, and then once I save it, it comes into my bank of smart charts. So I can have 20 of them or 25 of them. Jesse just changed this. So you can save up to 25 of them. And then if I want to print that out, I can hit the printer. If I want to edit it, I can hit the edit it. All right. But we're going to create a new smart chart. And this time we're going to do one for Unity. Um, word power, the way the icons go into our database, they're already colored. But in Unity, because we're using high resolution icons, they're all, black, they're all just um, plain icons without a background. So say I wanna come in here and I'm gonna make my smart chart and I'm gonna use those same words. So put, give it a minute, in. And now you can see that I'm getting these sequences in here. Oof. All right, and then just one more need. All right, so. Now you can see that these are plain, but I want them color coded. So what we have is we have these paint colors. So adjectives are gonna be blue, nouns are gonna be orange, and this will match the device. Um, verbs will be green and pronouns will be yellow. So I just turn the paint mode on and say, okay, I want green. So these are verbs, I'm gonna paint them green. And this one is an adjective, I'm gonna paint that blue. And so I can just click on it and make it the color that I want it to be, all right? So again, you can have 25 of these smart charts. If the word that you really, really need is not in there, then you're just gonna click here and I can add some um, requests. So <laughs> I actually had, I actually had um, some college students working on something and all of a sudden I got toilet pee and poop. I was like, well, there we go. I guess what, I <laughs> wonder what you're working on. But you know, maybe I want, I'm working on, on zoo animals and I can say I want zebra and a monkey and a giraffe, all right? And then when I, and you can see that I'm just putting commas to separate them. You don't have to put in a single word and hit send, a single word and hit send. You can put all of them in at once, all right? 
And then when I hit send, this is an email that comes directly to me. And now in my inbox, I will have this email that says, so-and-so is looking for Unity 60 sequenced, um, these three words. And so I will see your name. And if we are able to do it, then we will you know, answer you back and let you know. Give me a month to get them in. So I collect them all month. And then I have to put them in for 30 different levels. So it takes a little bit of time. But um, it's a way for that, that you can request vocabulary. 400 words are already in there, plus all the ones that I've added. So you should you know, have, you know, get what you need as far as core vocabulary. All right? So we're very, very excited about that. Thank you, Alicia. Yes, I do think it's awesome, and my web guys are absolutely amazing. All right, one of the other resources I wanted to show you. So we all went through COVID this year. It's been a crazy year, right? So think about if you were a um, finishing your, your degree in speech therapy. And all of a sudden you're like, oh, I can't go and do anything live because everything's locked down, right? So many of our speech students, you know, they got to go and do things virtually and they did some teletraining and teletherapy. Um, but I had one professor at, at San Francisco State that had her students develop a curriculum for kids using AAC. So what they did was they took the um, A Year of Words by Carol Zingari so a year of words is where she takes um, some very important core vocabulary words and divides it up into nine months so that you can do it throughout the school year. And by the end of the year, the kids are going to have a nice bank of words that they know. And so what they did was they took that concept and created a school year of core. And because this was not mine, this was done for me by these students, um, I made this free. All right, so that anybody can access this. So this is brilliant. So they have, they have it leveled. They have smart charts. And then they have it leveled every month. So you have level one and level two. So for kids that are beginners, obviously you're doing level one. And then for kids that are more experienced communicators, you pick on level two. And so I'm going to click on this and open this. And you guys, this is comprehensive. We are talking 90, more, 90 plus pages based on these words. So they pick a word that you're going to work on and then how you can use it in your routines, how you can play what games you can play with it. There's some um, reading books that, that have that, that word in there. They have talk about social interacting and video modeling, um, different music videos, structured activities, science, all kinds of really cool things based on that one word. And then you're ready for the next word. So some students may, this may take them a whole week. This may take them, you know, a couple of days. And so you have all of these words for the whole entire month. You know, that it's just fabulous. This whole curriculum of all really, really cool things that you do. And these um, these students update this every month for me. So it, um, right now we have it up till April. And then um, I probably in about next week, they usually send me the file and then we get them up. And so at the end of this year, they will have every single month ready for you to go. How cool is that, right? <laughs> so we love our students, all right? Okay. Now we're going to go to my favorite part of, oh, yeah, yes, um, somebody just asked if they got an A and they got their Cs. Yes, absolutely. And they did get eventually get to go and work directly with students once things opened up. So it was pretty cool. Um, we're going to go to my favorite area of the language lab, and this is a free area. So yes, Naomi, it has been on Practical AAC. So they, they have it there and they have it on the language lab so that more people can find it, right? All right, so we're going to go to our blog section. So twice a week, when, it, when I have it available, we put a blog up. And these blogs are dating back till the language lab started in 2013. So you, we have not deleted any of them. They are all archived, and they are all amazing. So like yesterday, um, we had a group of our consultants um, in the Midwest, and they all collaborated, and they talked about being a, you know, a team approach to um, doing AAC. And then many of our blogs are written by actual device users. So this is Margaret Moore, and she just wrote about, she was a, um, she uses a joystick to access her device. And she um, ended up going to get an evaluation and added eye gaze. So she's using her joystick and eye gaze because she's a college graduate and she is working now and she needs to be a little bit quicker. And she found that by Using both access methods at the same time, it became a little bit quicker for her. So this is brilliant. I'm going to show you one of my favorite ones. Um, and it is 
so some of these can be fun. Okay, so some of these, um, you know, Kim goes to spring training. So she was all excited about that. And so she was writing about that. Um, and you can see here, Mike Hipple, this is a great blog about him talking about when he was in middle school and was bas basically like misbehaving all the time because he didn't want to use AAC. And he kind of explains like why it was so hard for him back then. I mean, it's really, 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 really good stuff. But this one is one of my favorites. So this is Lance McLemore and he is an adult. So I think he's in his thirties and Lance has autism and he has just amazing perspective on just, just read the article. <laughs> and he, and he sent this to me and he was just like, um, Jane, he goes, this is going to like probably piss a lot of people off. And I'm like, you know what, Lance, your, your words are very, very important. And I think people need to understand your perspective. And so, you know, take a, take a look at these. So go into the blogs and check them out. If you have a student that you think would make a good blogger, down at the bottom of every single page on the Language Lab is something that says, contact us. So this is um, a way for you to connect with me and my team. So this will go to us. And if you say, hey, I'm working with this student and I think he'd make a really good blogger. And, you know, how do we do that? So I'll send them all the instructions. We do pay for blogs. So a student can actually make $30 for a blog that they write. And some of these blogs are like this, very comprehensive and very long. And some of them may be just, you know, a couple, a couple sentences, and that's fine. Um, as long as it's like, you know, something that the student is expressing themselves with. The other thing that's on this blog section, which is really, really cool, is our ambassadors. So this is part of my job. So I run the AAC Language Lab, but I also um, manage all of our ambassadors. So I think we're the only AAC company that actually does this to the extent that we do. I have 80 ambassadors that um, work for us. And the ambassadors are all um, pretty good communicators and they are available to do a staff development. They are available to work one-on-one -on -one with a kid. They are available to do a Zoom call. So if you're a mom and you have a student, maybe your, your child is using eye gaze and you've never saw you know, a really good eye gaze user or, or they're scanning or they're, um, maybe they have autism and you want to meet somebody like Lance, um, he will be available to, to communicate with you. So you can click on any of the ambassadors and we have some that are using PRC devices, Words for Life. Um, we have some that are using um, Saltillo devices. So a whole variety, every different access method. Um, in fact, we have um, Chris Klein who actually uses an accent device with his foot. And I'll show you that. But you can read all about Lance and then there's a little video. All right, so let me show you, let me show you Chris. So here's Chris Klein. I, I, Chris is a college graduate. He is married. I think he lives in Michigan. Um, he's got a great story to tell. Okay, so he talks about himself, and then he has a little video here. And all the videos are edited by one of my ambassadors, because I hate video editing. But now you can hear Chris tell his own story. And you can see how he's accessing his device with his foot. And he is just, I mean, he's funny, and he's really smart. And so if this is somebody that you think would be a good person to talk to your students or to talk to your college students, if you're a professor, whatever, all the way down here at the bottom, you can leave a message and see their availability. And, and you know, we can get you directly in contact with any of our ambassadors. If you have a student that you think would make a good ambassador, go to the homepage here and all the way at the bottom, is a form that you can fill out and say, hey, I'm working with this student and I think this might be really good for them. All right. And so anything that we do with ambassadors, they they we they expect to get paid. So if you want them to come and do a staff development, you know, we can tell you, suggest you how much, you know, like they might charge or they can tell you themselves how much they're going to charge. And then anything that they do for me, you know, I pay them. So they actually get paid to do their profile and to do their video. And then Dan Pop is one of our here is Dan, and Dan is my video editor, and he actually uses a, um, a head stick with a pointer on it, and he does all of the videos for me using iMovie with his head. I love him. He's fabulous and super, super cool guy. All right, Ms. Beth, we are right at ballpark price for AC users. So, Alicia, that's a great question. Um, 
the way that we that we pay them, if you were going to do it the PRC way, it's um, for a beginning communicator, it's twenty dollars an hour. For a more experienced communicator, it's thirty dollars an hour. And then um, we offer travel time, or if they're preparing something for you, like a lot of them have you know profiles already ready to go. Um, but if they're you know say you want them to present at a conference or something, you know then you might say okay, I'll give you fifteen dollars an hour to you know and give you two hours to to put your presentation together. Yeah, and so we want it to be a good wage. We want them, you know, this they're valuable. They're very, very, very smart and um, really good communicators. And so they deserve they deserve what we can give them. I mean, you can certainly negotiate with them individually, but um, that's basically what we do here. So Jane, could you, we had a question about programs and curriculums. Um, can you go back to the lab and show um, what that tab is? Absolutely. So I know we're so, have time to go into each one of those because there was a question about a training for um, getting ready to read. But if you could just explain a little bit about those and then you could also talk about what we're doing um, on your next class. Exactly. All right. So we have supports for news to you. We have supports for unique. You pay twenty dollars for your you, for your subscription. You do not get. I'm sorry, a free subscription to Unique or News to You. That's a separate company. But we do have supports in the way of smart charts, and then in News to You, we have an activity row that you can add every every week for what I call words from heaven. So the words that they might need that week. But you know, so if they're talking about NASCAR, they may not need to talk about NASCAR for the rest of their lives. So those words get replaced every week. Getting Ready to Read is a comprehensive reading program um, developed by Dr. Karen Erickson from the Center of Literacy and Disabilities and Dr. Gretchen Hanser. Um, so this is not my curriculum. This is theirs that they have done for us. So we have versions for Lamp Words for Life, Word Power 4260, Unity 60, and Unity 84. It is 150 lessons where you are teaching them um, word wall words and sight words. You're teaching them phonics and putting letters together to make words at the same time as teaching them where to find that vocabulary using their icon sequences. It is comprehensive. It is totally scripted out. So it is super easy to implement. I've had um, mom and dad use their hab working hours. So like, you know, they have a hab worker that comes in and gives them respite. So the hab worker, instead of watching TV with the kid, was doing literacy with the child. And um, so I will tell you, I just got, I started a little five-year-old in Nebraska, a brand new teacher, never had a kid with AAC in her class before, and they started doing um, the Words for Life one. Kid, um, let's see, I think Tyler is now like on about lesson 34, and he, the light went on, and he has figured out, and he knows how to read, and he loves doing it. So um, we actually should do a training on this one, Beth, because it's that good. Yeah, we've had We've had that as a question. We don't have anything planned on getting ready to read right now, but but again, your comments are what help us drive our training. So I think that's something we could definitely work on. But we do have an exciting training coming up and Jane's gonna tell you a little bit about that and about the BRICS program. So if you work with young adults, it's a totally different, you know, sometimes it's, it's a totally different set of kids. All right, so the, many of these, you know, have, um, never had a communication device or they've had multiple communication devices, but we need to look at it a little bit different because we need to do things that are age appropriate. So I was blessed to go to Temple University in Philadelphia where I studied under Dr. Diane Bryan and Dr. Amy Goldman. And um, we did a, a program there called ACES where we had device users come in and learn side by side with professionals. So I was a student, um, we had speech therapists, OTs, PTs, um, voc rehab people that would come. And we would learn side by side all about AAC with, you know, all together. And so that's a two week seminar at Temple, which is limited to probably about 15 people a year. So what we wanted to do was bring that to the masses. So our next training is called Stepping Up. And it is all about young adult content, including BRICS, that is on the lab now. And so we talk about um, some person-centered planning with this. We also show you on the lab how to find young adult content and some of our favorites. Okay, so today we looked at planning your lessons and using the screener and the starter set and how to find things and then um, writing activities and blogs and ambassadors. We've had a lot of fun today. Um, I appreciate your feedback and you can be honest. I'm, I, I'm tough, I can take it. Uh, and then, you know, if, uh, like Beth said, if you have suggestions for trainings, that's a great thing to include on that sheet as well. 
Also, if you want to, another really cool thing to do, if you're on social media and you're on Facebook, join the AAC Language Lab Facebook group. And that's another place where you can put questions up or, you know, success stories. And we've got about 8,000 people that are part of that group. And then we also have a YouTube channel. So if you're on YouTube, you can go to, you know, search AAC Language Lab. And I've probably got close to, you know, 50 or 60 videos up there that show how to do specific activities, how to do um, different lesson plans. So, you know, check that out as well. And make sure you hit subscribe. And then Jane does a Facebook Live. You want to tell them about that? I do Facebook Live on Tuesdays and Thursdays at 9 o'clock my time, which is noon Eastern Standard Time. But they're all recorded on that Facebook group. And so I always get up and I show something cool or something new or something that I think is fun. Um, usually maybe no more than five minutes, but gives you if you're looking for something quick and you need a, you know, a new new idea, then check out our Facebook Live.